Hey, what's up? In this video, we're gonna go over how to send a post request with Retrofit. So in my demo, I'm just gonna submit a post request to Reddit and actually log in with my Reddit account. You can use whatever, uh, whatever URL you want. I'm assuming it's gonna be different than mine. I'm just gonna use this one for a demonstration. So it's gonna have a screen like this where I'm gonna be able to type my username and my password and click log in. And it will actually log into my Reddit account using a Retrofit post request. So this is the request up here, this URL. And so I'm just gonna go over how to build this with you. To show you what you would expect for a response, a positive response is going to look like this. A negative response is gonna look like this. So I changed my password to an incorrect password. I hit send, and this is what a negative response is gonna look like. So I'm gonna show you how to send that type of request. We can see we have a header and just a bunch of parameters up here in the URL. So let's go to Android Studio. And I'm actually gonna continue from my JSON uh, get request tutorial that I just did. If you didn't watch that video, don't worry about it. You don't need any previous knowledge. I'm gonna start from scratch on this, so don't worry about it if you didn't watch that video. The only thing that you do need to note is you need to go into your build.gradle file and make sure you have these dependencies, the retrofit library, and then also the retrofit JSON converter library. You can grab these from the retrofit GitHub page. I'll put the link in the description for that. And we're also gonna need one more library because of the interface, because of what the interface for the login screen looks like, you're gonna to need to use this design um, library right here. So get that in there, hit sync. Once again, this will all be on my GitHub, so grab these if you don't have them. Now we're gonna go into activity main and we're just gonna quickly build, well actually I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. I'm gonna copy and paste in the layout file for the login screen. And I'm just gonna paste it down below this login button and we're gonna get a bunch of red here but we're gonna remove a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna get rid of this image view that holds the Reddit image and I'm gonna get rid of this styling for the button. Just so we're just gonna have a plain button. I'm gonna refresh and it's still saying that it's red but there should be no more issues. This, this, is, this should be good. So we just have um, a text input for a username, a text input for a password and then we have a button right here and um, you'll see what the names are here. We have ID button login, ID input password, and ID input username. And that's it. So let's get out of main activity and we are going to jump into the Reddit API here. And one of the nice things about the retrofit library is I can actually declare a bunch of different getter, getter methods, post methods, put like whatever. And I can just attach a method name to them and I can call them in any activity. So like, I don't gotta worry about this being here already. I can just go ahead and create a new one right below it. So we're gonna create a post method and I'm actually gonna type this all out and then I'm gonna explain it in a second here. So I'm gonna put username here and then we're gonna create a call and we'll do response body and we'll do login. I'll put a semicolon down there. We'll do at uh, header map and this is gonna be a map, string, string, and like I said, I'm gonna explain all of this, so if you're panicking, don't worry about it. And pass the user, and get the username, and we'll do a query. And in the query, we will once again pass user, and then string user, at query, and this is gonna be pass P-A-S-S-W-D, very important if you want to log into a Reddit account. Um, that is the correct spelling. And, whoops, and we need to do at query one more time. And this is gonna be API type. String, let's say type. Okay, that's it. So um, if you're familiar with retrofit, this is how you pass dynamic parameters. So this is going to be the user parameter up here. And you might be wondering, well, why did I put this up here when I could have just added it to a query? And that just comes down to the way that this URL is designed. So you can see here, our, our base login URL is gonna be this. And then we have my username with a question mark. The question mark is the key here. And then we have user equals username and password equals password and API type. So the reason that I use path, oops. So the reason that I use path here and not another query is because I don't, I don't want that and symbol. So you can see here, we have my username and then a question mark. That's what I want. If I was to use a query here, I would I would get something like, I would it would say user equals coding with Mitch, and then you would get an and symbol here. But that's not the way the URL is designed. It has to be like this. 
So to um, just do a simple substitution, that's what I have to do. I use the path. And then when you use query, what it does is it automatically prepends an and symbol. Whoops. So I'll close that. Yeah, so it automatically prepends an and symbol. So you can see it's prepended an and symbol here and it's prepended an and symbol here. The reason why it didn't prepend an and symbol here is because this parameter, um, it's different. So it's only going to prepend an and symbol if the variable before it had an equal sign in it. So because this, this parameter right here has no equal sign, it has a question mark. Um, it's, or sorry, it doesn't have a question mark. It would actually only have this. What it will do is it will prepend a question mark and then prepend the first parameter. But for every parameter afterwards, if it has an equal sign, it will, it will prepend an and symbol. And this is just something that Retrofit does automatically to make it easy for you. So just to write out sort of like a little map of what's happening here, this is gonna add coding with Mitch. This is gonna add um, user, this is gonna add actually question mark user equals coding with Mitch. This part will add and uh, passwd equals my password, which in this case is this right here, Mitch Tabian uh, 1234 exclamation mark. So that's going to be that right there. And then this will do uh, API type equals JSON. And that's what, that's what it's going to do in a nutshell. So now we're done in the API section, we can go into main activity and actually start writing the code. Very first thing I'll do is I'm gonna create my uh, static URL up here. So I'm gonna call it login URL and I can't remember what it is. It's uh, just goes up to login here. We'll stick that in there. Then we'll go down to on create and we're gonna create our button. So button login. Find you by ID, R dot ID, whoops. Uh, what is it? Something login? What's going on here? Do I need to build the project? I don't know why it's not recognizing that button in memory here. Okay, there we go, that's good. I've got an error somewhere. Not sure what's going on there, but it looks like when I rebuilt the project, it was fine. So now let's grab our edit text. So we'll go edit text uh, name equals uh, edit text by view by ID, or ID dot input username. And then we'll do edit text, edit text pass equals edit text by view by ID, or ID dot input password. Okay, now we're gonna attach, oh, we need to actually attach an uncle listener for this stuff since I didn't, actually, you know what? I could just comment it out. Uh, I got the button right there. That's fine. Let's just do it. So go button get data. You're not going to have this in your tutorial if you didn't follow the previous one. So don't worry about it. I'm just going to throw that in there. No big deal. And give us a bunch of space. And we're just going to ignore this down here. So now we're going to go button login and set an on click listener. New on click listener. And we need to get the username and the password. So we'll just go, I guess. View name equals edit text name get text up to string and then string pass equals edit text pass get text to string and you should probably do some exception handling here like checking for null values but I'm not going to do it but just know that that is definitely what you should do if you're in a real situation building an app here now we'll create our retrofit object builder and then we need to add our base URL, and that's gonna be our login URL. And then we're gonna add our converter factory, and it's gonna be the JSON converter that I talked about earlier. And then we're gonna go build, whoops, build, there we go. Now we need to declare our Reddit API, and that's gonna be retrofit.create, and we do uh, Reddit API.class, we create our call object and oh one thing I did forget to talk about was this response body thing and I'll talk about that in just a sec here so reddit api dot and now we're going to call our login method and I'll stop there and I'll just talk okay so this response body usually when you use retrofit you want to 
you know what your server response is going to look like so you create classes so that you can use getter and setter methods to get them easily but response body is what you want to use if you don't really know what the server response is going to be and you can just retrieve all that JSON data so that's why we're going to be using response body here and this is red oh and this method right here I should talk about this is the method that I created right here so like if I was to change this to sign in I could change this to sign in and it's the exact same thing I'm going to use it leave it as login so go back here go back here you can just change that to whatever you want so the first parameter here is going to be our headers so we need to create a hash map string string and do header map equals new hash map and these are just going to be key value pairs for the values that are in the header so if we go over to postman we can see that in our headers we just have one header the key is content type and the value is application slash json so we can do dot put uh, content type and then application slash json that's it so that's the only header we need if because we used a hash map we used a, uh, a header map here we can use we can add multiple headers and often with post requests you do need multiple headers so if you wanted to add a second one then you would just go you know header map dot put and you would add your second one or your third or your fourth or whatever however many you need and now that we have our header map we can pass our first parameter which is header map and we can pass our uname pass uname again and then password and last one is just a string JSON and so I'm just I'm just filling out all of these variables right because we have my username here we have our username again here password and then the API type which is just JSON now we'll attach an MQ and do a new callback just like we always do with retrofit and I'm going to do the on failure response first and I'm just going to grab the on failure from down here so I don't have to type it out again and now because we have like a generic response like we don't know what it's going to be. Uh, we got to do a little bit of extra coding here in the on response to actually retrieve that response. Getting the HTTP response is easy. We can just do uh, this right here. That's simple. That's just going to get the server response. It'll tell you if it was successful or if it failed and it will give you an HTTP server code and tell you what was wrong. But getting the actual information itself like um, like this information right here is going to be a little tricky. So let's just do that. We're going to need a try catch block here because we need to catch the JSON exception. New log E, JSON exception, E like a message. And then we're going to create a string. I'll call it JSON. And I'm going to go response.body.toString. And Actually, what I'll do is I'm just going to create this JSON object just to get rid of the error here, and then I'm going to run it. And I want to show you um, why we need to do all this extra stuff here. Oh, I need to declare so data equals new JSON object and pass JSON. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the app. I'm going to print out um, the JSON response here, just JSON, and I'll show you why we need to do this. So I'll run it. Uh, okay, so I probably should have set the dialog box to invisible, but that's fine. I'm just going to leave it and we'll just try and log in. So we'll go with uh, coding with Mitch and my password is M-I-T-C-H Fabian1234 exclamation mark. And we're going to watch the log as I log in. Let's press log in. And you can see, okay, so see it does work, right? You get the, you get the positive server response, which is um, this printing out right here and then here is the uh, the JSON message that I printed out right here and so that's you can see here that it's not actually able to access it because it doesn't know what type what data type it is it's it's saying okay we got this thing but it's gibberish I don't know what it is so we need to actually convert it to a JSON object so that we can read it so if I take this and just actually I could just leave that and I'll put another one down here and I'll just type data and we'll run it again and we'll type my username I think that dialog box is making it very laggy okay and try logging in 
Oh, I see what I did here. This needs to be string. And then I need to catch the IO exception. So catch IO exception. Sorry about that. Oops, IO exception E, there we go. And that should work this time. Famous last words. Okay, let's try this one more time here. I gotta get rid of that dialog box. It's really slowing down the app. Okay, try logging in. There we go. So now it actually is reading this, the response here. Oh, interesting. That was actually unexpected. For some reason, I'm getting a different uh, server response with the app as opposed to the uh, postman. Weird. Because you can see here, it's actually able to read it, and it gives us a success equals true prompt letting us know that we were successful in logging in and uh, my data is actually printed out nothing so so you don't actually need this you can just use the um, oops I better not comment that out yeah you can just use the uh, you can just straight up print out the response like that hmm. obviously uh, if, if you know what the response is gonna look like if you know what the data structure is it's always better to create object classes just like we did in my my get a retrofit tutorial where I created the feed and I got the children and the data and so on. It's always better to do that, but if you don't know what it's going to be, you can always just do this and it will actually print out the entire message. So you can see right here, this was the entire response right here. And so that's it. That's uh, doing post requests with retrofit. For those of you who are following with my Reddit app tutorial. This is going to be part of it. I actually will be authenticating with your Reddit account so that you can post comments on Reddit from the app itself. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check out my series on building the Reddit app. Don't forget to like the video. Follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.